Good afternoon, students. So today we are going to start with the science syllabus for the tenth standard, the first chapter, heredity and evolution. So when you talk about heredity and evolution, both are two different words. So today we will first start with the topic heredity. Everyone knows that DNA is a genetic material which is generally present in the nucleus of the cell, right? Okay, we say that. He looks like his father or she looks like her mother. Why do we say that? Because certain characters are generally transmitted from one generation to the another generation, right? And that is generally possible due to the presence of the chromosomes, which are generally present on the DNA, right? So DNA is a genetic material, which is generally present in the nucleus of the cell. And this DNA generally contains the structural and functional unit, they are generally called as the genes, right? So what are gene? Gene is a segment of a DNA that controls a particular character, right? What is gene? Gene is a unit or it is a segment of a DNA that controls a particular character. Say example, this is a double stranded DNA molecule. Am I right? This is a double stranded DNA molecule. Now this DNA is made up of a structural and functional unit this structural and functional unit are generally called as gene. Okay, so gene is a segment of a DNA that controls a particular character. Any kind of a character expressed in a living organism is under the control of gene. Right, it's under the control of what? It is under the control of gene. Right, so today we are going to study about transcription, translation and translocation. Right, so Francis Jacob and Jack Monat were the first scientists who for the very first time proposed the model of protein synthesis with the help of a DNA in a bacterial cell. Whereas the structure of a double stranded DNA was discovered by the scientists that is James Watson and Francis Crick. James Watson and Francis Crick were the first to study the DNA structure. Now, what is transcription? So before starting the transcription, we need to understand what exactly are the types of RNA. So we know DNA and RNA are the two types of genetic material. Now this RNA is of three types, right? That is messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA. Now when I talk about messenger RNA, right? The word itself suggests message, right? So when you talk about the DNA, DNA is a genetic material and it contains the genetic information. Now messenger RNA is having an ability that it can copy the genetic information from the DNA and pass to the ribosome for the protein synthesis, right? So the process where the messenger RNA copies the genetic information from the DNA and passes through the ribosome for the protein synthesis is called as transcription. Transcription is generally having a word called transcribe and transcribe means copying, right? So this is the DNA which is having a genetic information and this is your messenger RNA. So messenger RNA will copy the genetic information from DNA and it will pass through the ribosome for the protein synthesis that is called as transcription. We all know that the protein synthesis information is generally stored in a DNA, correct? And this synthesis of the protein is done by the DNA through the RNA. This process is called as central dogma, right? So what is central dogma? DNA is the storehouse of the protein, but the synthesis of the protein is done by DNA through the RNA. This process is called as central dogma, right? So two topics I have covered in transcription. What is transcription? What are the requirements of transcription? And what is central dogma? So the process which involves, the process which involves copying of information from DNA. That is the process where the genetic information is copied from the DNA by the messenger RNA and that information is passed to the ribosome for protein synthesis is called transcription, right? And the stored information is always with the DNA. This protein synthesis is done by DNA through RNA that is called central dogma. Now messenger RNA which is newly processed or newly formed in the nucleus is brought among the cytoplasm of the cell, right? Now this messenger RNA contains your sequences of codon, right? Isn't it? Which is in the form of three nucleotides, right? We know DNA and RNA. DNA is made up of adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. The thymine of the DNA is replaced by the uracil of the RNA. 
right so what happens in the messenger rna messenger rna contains a sequence of three nucleotide a sequence of three nitrogen bases is generally called as codon or it is also called as triplet it is also called as triplet right so a group of three nitrogen bases is generally called as codon or triplet and that's why it is said that it is having three nitrogen bases or three nucleotides which is called triplet codon so messenger rna is having a triplet codon right this is generally called as the start codon and this is generally called as the stop codon right start codon is generally present at the 5 dash end and stop codon is generally present at 3 dash end we all know that rna is a single standard structure so this is a single standard structure this is your 5 dash end this is your 3 dash end start codon at 5 dash end stop codon at the 3 dash end right now let's talk about second that is nothing but your translation so before starting with the translation right we should know that dr har gobind khurana was the first indian scientist who had discovered triplet codons for 20 different amino acids in the nature 20 different amino acids are there and this 20 different amino acids right okay 20 different amino acids are coded by the codons and they were discovered by the scientist dr har gobind khurana who was an indian scientist and he was been awarded as a nobel prize in 1960 in. Let's talk about translation. What happens in translation is that this is your messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is generally going to have a codon, right? So the message on the messenger RNA, right? Whatever the message on the messenger RNA is there, that is generally supplied by the amino acid from the transfer RNA, right? So transfer RNA will supply the amino acid through the codons which are generally present on the messenger RNA. So the codon will pair with the anticodon, right? Codon is present on the messenger RNA and anticodon is present on the transfer RNA, right? So the pairing of codon and anticodon to specify amino acid, the pairing of codon and anticodon to specify amino acid is called as translation. It's called as translation, right? So let's take an example. A U G, right? A U G. How are you going to read it? That is adenine, adenine. A stands for adenine, U stands for uracil, and G stands for guanine. So A U G is adenine, uracil, guanine, which is a codon present on the messenger RNA, right? So this is called codon present on messenger RNA. Now adenine will pair with uracil. Uracil will pair with adenine and guanine will pair with cytosine. So these are called anticodons. These are called what? These are called anticodon which are present on the transfer RNA. So remember one thing, keep it in your mind that codons are present on the messenger RNA and anticodon are present on the transfer RNA. This pairing of codon and anticodon to produce an amino acid or to specify an amino acid is generally called as translation. Now what happens in the translation is that the ribosome right what happens in the translation in translation whatever the ribosome is present this is a ribosome the ribosome starts moving from the 5 dash end to the 3 dash end i can say that the ribosome starts moving from the start codon to the stop codon so the movement of the ribosome from the start codon to the stop codon on the messenger rna is called translocation it's called translocation location is the point where the ribosome moves from the start codon to the stop codon on the messenger rna that is called translocation so i have discussed three topics transcription translation and translocation the process where the messenger rna copies the genetic information from the dna and passes to the ribosome for protein synthesis is called transcription Second, translation. That is, the message will be present on the messenger RNA that is specified by the amino acid produced by the transfer RNA. So, the pairing of codon and anticodon to produce the amino acid is generally called translation. And the process 
where the ribosome generally moves from one point to the another point that is from start codon to the stop codon on the messenger RNA is called as translocation. Now what happens is that many such kind of a chains are generally formed which generally produces the proteins and this proteins are generally used for various different kinds of a process in our living organism. Right? Any nucleotide, right? Any nucleotide of the gene changes in position may cause a minor change that is generally called as mutation. Now, if there is any change in the nucleotide sequences, that is, this is your codon, these are your nitrogen bases, I mean to say this is your nucleotide sequences. So, if there is any change in the nucleotide sequences on the messenger RNA or on the DNA, then it may lead to a minor change and that minor change is generally called mutation. Now, let's talk in somewhat about mutation. A sudden change in the genetic makeup of a constitution is generally called as mutation. Any sudden change in the genetic makeup of an organism is generally called as mutation, right? So, example, the best example is sickle cell anemia. You know very well, anemia, low level of hemoglobin in the body of, body of a person. Now, what happens in sickle cell anemia? The sixth amino acid is the glutamic acid. The sixth amino acid on the hemoglobin chain is glutamic acid. This sixth amino acid, glutamic acid, is replaced by the valine amino acid. It means the position of the glutamic acid is replaced or taken by the valine amino acid, which is a minor change in the sequence of a protein chain of a hemoglobin molecule that is called mutation. So, mutation may cause any kind of a minor change in the genetic constitution of a living organism. Okay, thank you.